position though, do you think at all about cementing yourself as one of the great 54s with Trinidad and Terry Norris? And well, the good thing is I've been ranked number number three when Floyd May was a, was a champion. And then Canelo was a champion. And then Coda, I was right there. Like, I think I was number two. And then it was Coda, and then I started passing them up. And then all of a sudden I fought John Jackson, and then I became the champion. And, and for the, you know, WBC, I lost it to Tony Harrison, which I really didn't lose, but I just got to accept it. And then I moved on, and I become, I still, I'm still the champion at 154. I mean, once they, once the story is written, you know, the book is finished, y'all will come back and say, Jamel Charlo did a hell of a job in 154. You know, like I, I held it down. You know, and I, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what I've done in the division. But I got a lot, I got to get Castano out the way. I got to show y'all Mexican fans and Argentinian fans with why I'm number one guy that's been the number one guy for so many years. I possess a different type of strength. I have a different type of power when I punch. Um, I'm the haggler in the horns put together, you know, and 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 I got 12 rounds to do it. Jamal, Jamal. Uh, you would be the first undisputed champion in your division in the four belt era. Do you, this, this is not my water. I'm, essentially, is my water. Um, do you think that that right there will will definitely put you in, in the in the Hall of Fame at you know? Hall of Fame, uh, all these right. title defenses, first undisputed and, and uh, super welterweight. Or do you think that there's still more to accomplish at 60 and possibly even 68? Yeah, man, I, I, I think that I might get an opportunity to make a move in my life like that. Um, I like that you said Hall of Fame because that's what's important. You know, what's important is leaving a legacy and I want to leave a legacy for my children. You know what I'm saying? And it's not about right now. You know what I'm saying? It, the, the, the legacy the legacy is for the future you know what I'm saying and so I'm like I said I'm writing my book my story is to be told and if I don't get the the eyes and the viewers that's okay I'm not begging to be the most popular boxer I'm not begging to be the, the hottest guy around this shit is dead to me you know what I'm saying I'm just doing it for me and my future they told y'all no. packing up or something? I don't know. They ain't told me nothing. We're going to find out now. <laughs> Jamal, uh, Derek actually mentioned uh, how critics said before you came to him that you weren't a puncher of an athlete. Obviously, you, you started knocking a lot of people out. What is it about Derek's uh, training style that maybe helped him in the power department? Well, Derek is like a tall guy, right? And he got these big ass strong arms because he used to be a boxer. So when we do in the mitts, everything that Derek does is fucking power, like cha 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 cha. Then I added, I added um, legendary Juan Guzman, which was my favorite fighter when I was a young child. You know, like even watching him grow up. So I added Guzman. Guzman is about a lot of speed, a lot of defense. But I came from Ronnie Shields pedigree, you know, and that's a lot of things that people forget. Ronnie Shields was a different type of fighter. He stick, he move, he punch. He had a different arsenal. But um, I, when I added Derrick James, he created like a different type of uh, ferociousness in me, you know. And um, I'm getting older, so I don't want Guzman. I'm getting a little bit smarter. You don't gotta get hit with certain shit. Let's not worry about that. So it's like right now I'm becoming a full all-around fighter that I am, you know. And so, uh, you know. Derek, 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 we, we, man, this has been a, 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 a um, this has been a, like, an amazing time, you know, training with Derek. You know, um, from the last fight, you know, it was hard to try to make these two meet, you know, and, and now that uh, Guzman is understanding everything that Derek's trying to tell me, we stick it to that game plan so we all could be united in one, be, be solid together, and, um, you know, like it's been good. You know, like right now, I, I, I can't ask for a better team than what I have. Jamel, what's, what's the trickiest thing, man, about uh, fighting Castano? Fucking, I don't know, it's not a trick. It's, there's no trick to it, it's about me, you know what I mean? It's about me having my best night. If I'm if I'm off a little bit, then then you people gonna see it, y'all gonna talk about it, y'all gonna say, you know, gonna make judgment. But, the, but the, the, there's no trick to it. The trickiest thing is listening. So I kind of sometimes it can become hard, it can, it can, you know, like a warfare when you're trying to do you, you know what you, but you got to understand what they saying, and then it's like putting it all together at once, you know? So it's like, I go in the gym sometimes and I just want to, coach say do this, do it right away, you know? But sometimes you don't got to do it right away.